Welcome to On Call with Dr. Anselm Anyoha. In this podcast, learn about the social, emotional, and physical health of children and their journey from birth through preschool and beyond. Find compassionate answers to issues parents and children face and that pediatricians encounter every day. Discussions in this podcast are not meant to diagnose or treat any conditions. Parents and caregivers, talk with your children's pediatricians or doctors about topics and perspectives presented here. You are on call with Dr. Anslam on Yoha. Hello, everyone. Welcome to part four of Dr. Anyoha's Caregiver Newborn Relationship Model. Today, Dr. Anyoha will talk about how to infer what a newborn is thinking to read their mind by being in tune with their emotions and how they react. Welcome, Dr. Anyoha. Can you explain to us what you mean by effect attunement? Yes, good morning, and thank you, Paula, for that introduction. Affect a two men, which is the understanding of the emotional states of others, is the bedrock of the ongoing caregiver newborn interaction. Since it is not possible to accurately discern what another person is thinking, much less what a newborn is thinking, nevertheless, being able to read and respond to infant emotions, when that sad, joyful, peaceful, when they're hurting, being able to respond to these emotions strengthens the emotional connection between caregivers and infants, with the infant feeling confident that he or she is being understood. It is the foundation for healthy brain growth, language development, as well as cognitive development. So how is it possible for parents to read the mind of infants? I'm looking at my baby. I see how their expression is. Is that the same thing? Well, yes, it's uh, kind of similar. So every day we meet our friends and family members. We're trying to discern their voice and read their facial interpretation. So it's a similar concept, trying to imagine what a baby is feeling at a typical time. It could be a difficult task for parents, but... The good thing is that the parents do not have to be right, always right, right? What is more important is the action that you respond to the interpretation of what the baby is going through. That's what is important. What would be an example of that? If someone came in with a newborn, how would they interpret what they're feeling or what they're thinking? A good example is to have this dad who brought a two-day-old baby to my office. When I was uh, having a discussion with the dad, and I asked if he could tell how a baby is feeling. The dad did not hesitate. He said, yes, he could tell. And when we went to conversation, he said that when they were staying in the hospital before they were discharged, this baby went with nurses to get a hearing test done. And when they brought the baby back, the father said that he noticed that the baby was sad. I asked his dad, how do you know? How do you know the baby was sad when they brought her back to you after hearing test? What the dad told me was that because the baby was not moving and acting as she was before they took her. So, so a parent who feels this way will act differently. The, a, a parent did not observe any change in the baby's behavior. So that's interesting. We're talking about the inner state, and it might not always be what a newborn is expressing. But it's the parent picking up on the change of the thoughts or the feelings of the baby. That's right. Yes. The parents should always be constantly assessing the baby's state of mind. It also includes the imagining whether your baby is cold or warm, whether they're hungry, whether they're hurting or fatigued. So periodically, without knowing it, a lot of parents peer into the baby's mind to see what's going on in the part of the world. When we were talking earlier, you mentioned something called the internal working model. Can you tell us what the internal working model is and what parents need to know about it. 
This is a, a term coined by British psychologist John Bowlby. When babies have any communication with parents or caregivers, be it verbal or physical, they internalize those communications. They remember that physical interaction, verbal interaction, they record that in their memory as pleasant or unpleasant. And this will over time affect the way the babies deal with outsiders as they grow up, as they become infants and children. It will kind of affect how they see the world. So becoming aware of this internal working model and how the memory and feelings of the newborn works, can you tell us the different ways that these memories from past experiences help them as they're developing? Babies can tell whether it's pleasant and whether it's soothing or jarring. So down the end, your baby out of his clothing, so when they're dressing the baby, these babies record these experiences as very uncomfortable. And they remember that. Compare that with a parent who dresses the baby warmly, gives them bath warmly, and talks to them in a loving manner. That baby creates that experience that will guide him or her in their future dealings with people around them. So every encounter registers in the baby as a memory that we use as their internal working model. Can you give us other examples about how parents differ in their understanding of what their baby's feeling? Do you have any examples from your practice? I have a couple of examples I want to share with my listeners. The first example, this couple, I asked them if they could tell how the baby's feeling at the particular time. The mother of the baby did not hesitate to answer. And she said, yes, I could tell by my baby's facial expression and different type of types of crying. The father who was sitting beside her joined in the conversation and he collaborated the mother's answer that the babies do have special expression which signal the way they feel. The couple have a 10 year old child, which might have helped them in their knowledge about how babies express their feelings. The answers impressed me so much and I congratulated them for their insight and the importance of trying to figure out how a baby feels and responding accordingly. What are some of the questions you may ask parents of newborns to help them become more aware of a baby's inner thoughts. Do you have an example you can share with us? Yes, I asked a um, couple of a two-day-old baby the same question. The question I asked them, is it possible to tell how a baby is feeling at the time? The mother said, yes, she could tell by intuition. She carried the baby for nine months. And when the baby was in her womb for nine months, she could tell how the baby was feeling. So I never thought about this before about mothers using intuition to tell. So that was new to me. I shared further examples of how parents can tell that they are learned from the other parents who I've talked to before. People might assume you can automatically tell how a baby's feeling just by looking at them and they're crying or they're fussing. In this model, parents have to tune in to the inner world of the baby and what their thoughts are. And to do that, the parent needs to really pay attention if the baby's mood is changing at some point. Is that right? That's the most important thing to periodically watch your baby and try to read the facial expression. It's, it's there, but it's subtle. The parents who learn how to read the baby's facial expression by kind of uh, paying attention and constantly observing their babies to see if there's any change in facial expression. So that brings up an interesting idea. Some parents might think, oh, a baby is crying, they're hungry, or they're tired. But you're saying that a baby can have a range of inner feelings. Newborns can have a whole range of emotions that a parent might not think about. Can you tell us what that could be? The babies can be fatigued. They can be lonely. They can feel tired. They can be joyful. Sometimes they feel they, they want to play. They want to engage. 
So these are all the spectrum of feelings which parents have to turn into. If they want to engage with their baby actively, they have to be able to engage the baby wherever the baby might be at any particular time. What kind of questions would you ask parents of a newborn that could help them understand the inner feelings? Are there questions that you ask parents? I ask these questions to make parents think about these subjects, about the inner feelings of the baby. Usually when I pose these questions, most big parents are surprised. And I will go into this conversation of baby's feeling, then the baby's emotions and the parents will have their own theories that I'll share with them what I learned over the years from studying in this field and for being a pediatrician for 30 years. My goal is parental awareness. We tend to raise babies passively. That's how most parents try to raise their babies, like they were raised by their parents. But when I pose these questions, my intention is to make conscious efforts, which I want the parents to remember. Babies have feelings. Right, they have emotions, they want to connect with you. Don't ignore them. They could be sad, it could be they could be tired, they want to engage with you. So remember that. Don't ever forget it, that a baby has a feeling. The question creates a dialogue between me and the parents so I can understand what the parents know what they don't know, and they will fill in the gaps wherever it exists. I also find out that even when parents are very knowledgeable, that affirmation that they're doing the right thing is very important. They want to know that they're doing the right thing. That's what I found out in my research. Even parents who are in healthcare fields, they have this affirmation that a pediatrician, somebody who's an expert in infant mental health, says that they're doing the right thing. So to parents, it's a positive thing. Is a dance between the parent and newborn to find that common ground where everybody can understand each other's feelings. And of course, as the baby begins to mature, the baby will also learn, begin to learn the parental feelings as well. Begin to appreciate that parents have feelings and that the parents don't have to come to every cry and every moment they may. Parent and newborn begin to understand each other more and more. So it's kind of a dance. Is it fair to say when parents read the mind of a newborn, it's more about actively noticing how a newborn is feeling and what they may be thinking rather than passively engaging with them? Exactly. Actively engaging and making active efforts to bring out the best in your baby. So that is very important. That consciousness, that awareness, that even babies have feelings. So this baby internalizes all this physical contact they have with parents and caregivers, and it becomes their internal working model. You mentioned a little bit about the inner thoughts of newborns and how parents might not realize there's a range of emotions. But this could also carry to other relationships that we have in our lives, to even adult relationships. Can you touch a little bit upon that for us? Our relationship as adults have its origin in our relationship when we are newborns. So there's a connection between the relationship we had with our mothers when we were babies. And a lot of people tend to miss that connection. If you don't have a loving relationship with your mom or your dad, caregiver when you are a baby, it's going to be difficult, not impossible to have the same loving relationship when you grow up as an adult. So that connection is there with our caregivers as infants, translate to our relationship with our peers as adults. Thanks for joining us for this episode where we found out how to read the mind of a newborn by tuning into their inner world and their inner thoughts and feelings, and how this also applies even to adult relationships across a range of human experiences. In the next episode, we'll find new ways to actively engage with a baby that has just come into the world and into your world. Thanks for joining us for this episode. 
To answer questions you may have in a future podcast, write to Dr. Anyoa at modernerapediatrics at yahoo.com. Find articles and books written by Dr. Anyoa on his website, modernerapediatrics.com. Listen to On Call with Dr. Anyoa wherever you find your podcasts.